This is Nine Sports with Jacques Doucet. Well, they've, they've made life difficult on everybody that they've played. And, you know, we've got a disappointed bunch in there, a team that, that played very, very hard. I mean, we came up short. You, you've got to give them credit. That's a big physical, talented team. And, you know, you, you can't, against a, a, a team like that, you know, turnovers uh, were, were the story. More on LSU's narrow win at Texas A&M in a moment. But first, we begin on the bluff. The Southern Jaguars with a golden opportunity tonight, pardon the pun, against the visiting Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. First place in the SWAC West on the line at A.W. Mumford Stadium. Let's take you to all the action. The Jaguars taking the field and the home crowd just not on board tonight. Only 13,500 after drawing 25,000 for a homecoming last week. First quarter, Jags trailing 7 to nothing, and Dre Joseph looking for Sylvester. In Zeke it's picked off by Bill Ross, and he is gone for a pick six from 60 yards out. The Jaguars turned the ball over four times on the evening and trailed at that point 14 to nothing. Benjamin Anderson then back in the pocket on a third down play escapes. Jaguars can't bring him down. He finds the end zone from 30 yards out. He had 75 yards rushing, and before you know it, the Jaguars trailing 21 to nothing after just the first quarter. In the second quarter, Southern finally dents the scoreboard. Lee Mitchell into the end zone from one yard out. But Southern and those special teams botch the extra point, still trailing 21 to 6. Anderson then drops it off quickly to Ladarius Eckwood. And Eckwood is going to get into the end zone, cuts it back in uh, dust and all sorts of stuff, flying on the field there for a 52-yard touchdown. Anderson, 296 yards passing. And then late in the first quarter, or second quarter, I should say, Aaron Legrone, very good around the goal line tonight. Only had seven carries, but here from seven yards out, he's into the end zone. Legrone again from one yard out. Folks, it was 41 to six at halftime. Southern with a couple of touchdowns in the second half to make the score look a little more cosmetic, but they lose 50 to 21, the final score. WAP Sharif Ishak was at the game and has post game reaction. Thanks a lot, Jacques, here with Southern quarterback Dre Joseph. Dre, a golden opportunity to take over first place. Slips through your hands. Just what happened tonight? I mean, they came out and they played better than us. You know, we started off slow, we dug ourselves a hole, and we couldn't get out. You talked about you guys didn't have the energy, you guys came in flat. Why is that? I don't know. I, I think the lack of focus during the week. You know, it played a major role in the game. Just talk about the offense. You guys were down quick in this game. 21 nothing. Next thing you know, it's 41-6. to six. You threw a pick six. Just what happened out there? Uh, Texas route, halfback angle. Number 25, Ross, he came down. And as soon as I threw it, I threw it a tad bit late. And that caused them to beat up and pick it off. I think we moved the ball well offensively. But when we get in the red zone, we have to score more. We can't rely on our defense to always be on the field especially with those guys being down, key guys. All right, Dre Joseph, they have 24 hours to get over this loss. Next week, they head to Shreveport to take on Prairie View. Jacques, back to you. All right, thank you, Sharif. The LSU Tigers certainly had their share of ugly moments Saturday afternoon, like finishing with 13 penalties for 102 yards and converting just two of 16 third down attempts. But as WAP Sports Director Steve Schneider tells us, LSU won the numbers that count the most. I think quarterback Zach Mettenberger summed it up best. We're not about stats, we're about getting wins. And certainly early in this game, it was Johnny Manziel and the Aggies who racked up stats and a lead. 180 yards in just one quarter, a 9 to nothing lead, a 12 to nothing lead. But eventually the Tigers put up 24 straight and their defense settled down. And they knew that we were going to have to suck it up and, and, and play the second half. And, you know, the third quarter was probably our best quarter. The first drive, you know, we, we got a little, a little tired. They were, you know, up-tempo. But uh, we, we got set in, and it, it wasn't that bad. You know, I think Thales' interception was a big momentum change for us. Uh, he was scrambling, trying to look to make a play. He made a throw, and uh, Thales was just able to get to it, and it gave us a lot of momentum. Defense just, you know, had to get their feet set, understand what's going on, get a comfort of the, the scheme. and. We felt like it was a matter of time that we would get on track, and that we would, uh, you know, solve the solve the uh, the issues and uh, and make plays. Right before half, Mettenberger hit a strike again, capitalizing on turnovers. A big part of this one, LSU didn't have a single turnover in the entire game. We knew something was going to happen. We were going to get a drive together, and uh, you know, right before half, getting those two touchdowns was huge, and uh, really uh, just. 
just the adversity we went through today and how we handled ourselves, I'm very proud of. The pitch from Spencer. Did you talk about that play? Because that was a huge <laughs> point in the game. You know, that's just something we had. You know, Les Miles got a lot of tricks, and that's one of his tricks he pulled out of the bag, and, and it worked. And the second half of this game going much the way the experts expected. LSU taking over with its physical play on offensive and defensive line, with freshman Jeremy Hill once again delivering the kill shot. Jeremy Hill is a sleeping giant. He's definitely a sleeping giant. And I think a lot of people are starting to find out now. You see kind of a similar run. And once again, this week with Hill, and he breaks through. And, you know, I, once again, I'm, I'm down there just chasing as fast as I can. And it was awesome. You know, it was a great place to play here. Um, and I'm glad we walked away with the W. As we were wrapping up here, head coach Les Miles mentioned it. We recognize it's a tremendous opponent that we look forward to, to playing. And in two weeks, you'll see LSU and Alabama right here on Channel 9 in prime time. From College Station covering the Tigers, Steve Schneider, WAFB 9 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. A pretty incredible night in Ruston for Louisiana Tech against Idaho. The Bulldogs not only score 70 points, but they ring up an astounding 839 yards of total offense. Leading the way was freshman running back Kenneth Dixon, who carried for 232 yards and six touchdowns. The Bulldogs improved to 6-1 and one on the season and win 70 to 28 over Idaho and a rough day for the Nichols State Colonels in Nacogdoches, Texas against Stephen F. Austin. It was Brady Attaway, Attaboy, throwing for 474 yards and five touchdowns in this contest. Colonels trail 31 to nothing at the half. They lose 44 to 10 the final on that one. Bo Bear, the younger brother of T-Bob, played the second half of quarterback, threw for uh, 163 yards. UL Monroe wins in overtime. We talked about Tech. Sam Houston all over McNeese. UTEP tops Tulane. Grambling gets a victory as well. SEC action tonight in Knoxville. Peyton Manning visiting the Tennessee Volunteers for their huge opportunity at home against Nick Saban's number one Alabama Crimson Tide. Saban taking on his old protege Derek Dooley in this contest. And uh, A.J. McCarron throwing for a career high 306 yards and four touchdowns. Amari Cooper had seven catches for 162 yards. Bama now has the offense to go with the defense. They uh, roll tonight 44 to 13, the final score. I'll let these uh, SEC scores take us to commercial break and tell you that uh, tomorrow, Jonathan Vilma is supposed to play 20 to 30 snaps for the New Orleans Saints. More news coming up.